All right, everyone, welcome to Metal Talk. Today, we have a very big surprise, a true example of strength in metal. He is German. He has sung in incredible bands such as Gamma Ray and Primal Fear. His name is Ralph Shapers. Ralph, what an honor. Welcome to Metal Talk. How are you? Thanks for having me. What an honor to be here. I'm fine. How are you? I'm doing fantastic. Uh, really good and happy to have you as a, a, a brand new guest here at Metal Talk. Uh, you know, we've had a great array of uh, singers, musicians in the power metal world, but we felt incomplete without <laughs> you. So thank you for doing this. Thank you so much. Thanks, too. Thanks for having me once again. So, Ralph, uh, it's been more than 30 years uh, that you've been in the power metal world. Uh, you've been there since the beginning uh, uh, and since the inception of this incredible genre that we all love. Your latest production is Metal Commando. Uh, it was released in 2020. Talk, about, talk, about, talk to us about the current state of Primal Fear. What are you guys currently working on? I know that you guys had announced some dates recently. We're going to talk more about that. Primal Fear, what are you guys currently working on? Any new material, perhaps? Well, actually, we have the album out one year now. We couldn't bring it to life, as everybody knows. Uh, couldn't play it live, so, uh, mm. you know, it's still a bummer. We're, we're on hold in terms of playing live. But what we do, we just release a uh, candy here and there once in a while. For instance, now, on in, in April the 9th, we're going to release the single with um, as a duet with Taya, the song... I will be gone from the from the album Metal Commando. This is the T-shirt already. Mm. Taya, Taya. Wow. Together as a fusion. It's a beautiful ballad. It is a beautiful song. And I still have goosebumps all over the place when I listen to the track. So so that's what we do once in a while, releasing videos, video clips. Uh, and we also recorded the video for that song. So we're really looking forward to what the metal world is, is uh, responding on that. Fantastic. And we know that Tarja is a huge, huge figure in the, in the world of metal. Fantastic that Primal Fear is joining forces with other great icons of the, of the metal world, such as, such as Tarja. That's fantastic. So what we're talking about, your, uh, you know, the current state of touring, which is obviously incredibly uncertain. uncertain. But you were one of the first bands uh, earlier, months back, that you released an itinerary of touring, you know, starting from, uh, I believe it was from May to September. You visited countries like Germany, Czech Republic, Slovakia. Uh, Bulgaria, is that still in the plans, or are we holding off to see what happens in the with the climate, Ralph? As we can see now, some festivals are also on the verge of being cancelled here and there, and mm -hmm. they're already cancelled, like Hellfest and all those uh, big festivals in Europe. They're not going to happen because it's still too early for that. So that's what happened last year as well. So we would have uh, played um, early last year in, in, in not early, but in almost in the mid last year in May. We would have been to America with Symphony X, uh, the double right. tour, and you know that didn't happen because we all know why. It's obvious why. And this should be again it was scheduled for May this year. It did, does not happen again. Mm -hmm. Next is going to be if there's going to be live playing again, which we all hope. It's going to be very very uh, rush and very tough and uh, busy year because everybody's going out there again. And we're always scheduling all. We are already scheduling our European tour in September this year, which is brave. But we're somehow positive people, and you know we will just have to have to. We gotta get to give the fans a little bit, a little, a little bit of a perspective for what's going on soon. So um, that's what we do, and we will see what happens. So let's keep the fingers crossed that this will happen in, in fall. It's kind of like a waiting game, right? Like that's all that we can do. Us as fanatics, we have to understand the situation and uh, thank uh, our fellow musicians that are, you know, releasing, uh, uh, you know, obviously little bits and pieces of music that we want to listen to. And uh, I, I mean, of course, we can we can uh, imagine how it feels or how the band is feeling. But Ralph, personally, um, are you eager to get back on the stage? Are you aching to get back to on the stage? Of course. <laughs> Yeah. This is this is how we started. I mean, it all started with playing live, and as a as a young band, you're just keen to go out there, and you're hungry to go out there on stages of the world and play, 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 play. And that's what right. we still do because it's still in the blood. When once you smell the blood of playing live and, and, and the adrenaline kick and everything, you don't want to miss it. So 
we're adrenaline junkies somehow, so we have to get back. <laughs> yeah. We understand also, we do understand the situation, and we do understand that this is only necessary to do what we do. So we are, we are also very uh, patient in the end, and we will somehow wait until it's really safe again to go out there for the people, for our fans, and of course for us as well. So let's hope the vaccine kicks in pretty soon everywhere, and we're we'll going out again. You know, you you uh, you uh, mentioned a great uh, uh, metaphor. Once you've tasted that blood of being on stage, you want to get back there, and it's just kind of like this necessity, right? That you have, absolutely. We can only imagine how it is, and we are so eager uh, to see you back on the stage. Uh, so, Ralph, you spoke to us about the the, the single with Tarja. Uh, and and obviously we spoke about Metal Commando, which is already a year old. Um, in the horizon, is there maybe a new album, a full length album that's on the works? Uh, you guys are already recording something, I'm assuming. It's always on the horizon. The next album was always yeah. on the horizon. So, yeah, right. You know, we're doing a lot. Many, uh, all of the, all members of Primal Fear are doing many things because we have mm -hmm. to, of course, because it's our business. And because we love to make music, and uh, that's the most important thing, we love to do it. And if uh, I'm involved for in another project called Baron Carter, don't know if you heard of that, it's brand new, and I'm very busy with that. I'm also helping uh, out Sinner with uh, some harmonies here and there, which is very, very interesting to keep doing the rock with the family, and that's really great because we are a big family and we simply love each other, and that's why we also support each other. Mm -hmm. And um, Alex is doing many things with Voodoo Circle and so forth. You know, everybody's still very busy, which is good. We we gotta keep busy. We gotta keep going. You know, so uh, that's what we do as musicians. And of course, I'm also uh, doing my vocal lessons as a teacher. I'm teaching, and uh, like I said, I'm doing this uh, singing sometimes for other bands when they ask me, "Do you want to sing? Do you, can you borrow your voice for another song or whatever?" I'm open if it's if it's a good song. I'm really open to do that as well. So, yeah, so being busy is the most important thing in these days. You're absolutely right. And we're definitely going to talk more about your extracurricular activities that you do, such as teaching and, uh, yes, also collaborations. We follow you very, very closely in your uh, Instagram account and your Facebook Thank account, you. uh, of course. And, and we know that you are very active when it comes to those things. So we're definitely going to go in depth about your activities throughout this pandemic and what you've been doing all this time. But, you know, here at Metal Talk, we're known for going very much in depth Uh, and, and the careers of the musicians that we absolutely love. So we wanted to talk to you about, obviously, the beginning of your career. Uh, many fans such as myself, you know, we first uh, learned of you uh, when you step into uh, Kai Hansen's uh, uh, Gamma Ray, of course, the band that he created after he left uh, Halloween. So let's talk a little bit about Gamma Ray, if you're okay with that. Are you cool with that? It didn't start with Gamma Ray, but let's talk about Gamma Ray, no problem, yeah. <laughs> okay, okay. So uh, where, where did you start in particular, Ralph? Well, actually, talk, talk to us about where you pioneered. Actually, I was, I was starting in school already when I sung with my first school band, like every musician does somehow, you know. Yeah. The first uh, baby steps into the, the little world, of, the small world of rock and roll scene in our, club, in our area, in our hometown mm -hmm. area. And, you know, doing baby steps and, and somehow being uh, curious, well, how can you do this and that? And so it's all in terms of playing live and having the first set of microphones and PA systems and so forth. So my first band was a school band. And then there was uh, another band from Stuttgart playing heavy metal, Beast of Prey, that was. And um, then the band Tyrant Pace, which I have recorded three albums with, one of the best released as they saw me uh, at the gig for my other band, Beast of Prey. So they came to the gig and right after the show, and I was always keen to get, in, to get into uh, Tire and Peace because it, it was exactly the, the sound of music I wanted to do. The, it was the, mm -hmm. the real British way of heavy metal, British new wave of heavy metal. And that was somehow Iron Maiden, Jesus Priest, and all these bands, Sex, and somehow we did that sound with Tire and Peace again, we can say. And uh, yeah, that was somehow the first step into the first recording scene area where we're We was, I was doing all, I was learning my job already and I had these night sessions in the studio I was working during the day and had the night sessions in the studio so that was wow. you know it was tiring and it was exhausting but it was all worth it because you know it's all learning I don't want to miss anything even if it was not good or everything not, not everything was good 
but it's right. also uh, there for learning a lot. You learn a lot from downsides as well, you know. When 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 you started and you were recording, what what other job? What other regular job did you have? I'm always curious to know what 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 was that regular job that you have, Ralph? I was learning like electronics. So actually, electronics. Wow. That, I did it a long time in gallery. I still was doing electronics, and also at the beginning of of, of Primal Fear. So that's I did, I did. that's why you're a you're a, a microphone technician, right? Yeah, not that's what I'm doing now. I'm I'm consulting with another guy who's building microphones. The one I have for recording, also the Hoj microphone. But I was learning electronics, but I don't build the microphones. I'm just here for him to somehow, of course, uh, promote his great microphone, the Hoyt microphone, and mm -hmm. I think through, since 12 albums now. So anyway, wow. uh, I learned that, electronics, and I was long, uh, I did that job many, many years. Uh, I was there 28 years, actually, until I started to be a self-employee, making music only. Wow. And then on around 89 is when you actually joined Gamma Ray, correct? Uh, how did that come about, Ralph? Uh, Kai leaves. How does he find you? And how do the stars align to bring wow. you into, uh, you know, because obviously, uh, you know, we were, we were getting off the train, the Halloween train of Michael Kiska and all that. And then comes Ralph Sh uh, uh, Shapers who just, boom, just completely creates a brand new, wow, who is this guy? That's the feeling that I had when I first listened to you. So how do the stars align and you join Gamma Ray? Well, I mean, that happened a little bit earlier. Um, I recorded a demo which Kai produced with a band from Hamburg. They didn't have a vocalist, so they asked me, uh, Kai asked me if I could uh, come up because he was uh, listening to Tyre Pace back in the days as well. Oh, was, nice. So in the scene, we knew each other. And we respected each other. That's the most important thing still nowadays. Respect is the most uh, important word here. And uh, that's what happened when Kai asked me if I can sing the demo. He, he's producing this uh, band from Hamburg. And he wants me to come up to Hanover where the, the, the demo was recorded and produced. And that's how we got to know each other a little bit more closely. And um, then we separate ways again. I was out of time and pace already because... We couldn't afford it more because so-called managers uh, just suck the money out of the band because, <laughs> you know, do, pay, paying bills for I don't know what. <laughs> yeah. I was just going to make music. But in the end, they took care of the business and, of course, in their own pocket. Anyway, I was tired of praise doing the cover band scene. And then I heard Kai was leaving Halloween and... Kai somehow thought about having me, and I thought about why not joining Kai. And um, so we got each other in mind, parallel somehow, co coincidentally, and we just hooked up and, and called each other on the phone and said, let's do something. And that's what happened in 89. So I was driving up and down to Hamburg from Stuttgart, up and down all the time. This is in 700 miles, 700 kilo kilometers. Kilometers, wow. Weekend, and it was still working, like I said. But it's all worth it. I don't want to visit. It's all great. Yeah. What a fantastic uh, era for a band, let me tell you. Um, you know, among the three studio albums that you guys released and uh, DVD heading for the East. Yeah. Wow. I mean, Ralph, just the, the audio quality of that uh, uh, DVD uh, to this day, I believe is, uh, uh, I mean, I, I can't say it's unmatched, but it's up there. It's so current, the, the audio, the way that we listen to your voice, the drums, Kai's guitars, etc. It was just a fantastic combination. And, um, and it was a standalone band. It wasn't, it, it just, it, it, it was just a fantastic lineup. And it was great to hear you back in the day with Gamma Ray. What a fantastic time. And, and you know, you mentioned uh, uh, the, um, the relationship that you had with Kai. Uh, there's a very uh, uh, a popular, famous video uh, of you singing in this uh, wedding. I don't know if uh, you've ever seen that before. I'm sure you have. Some cunt was recording this. <laughs> 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 um, I don't know. Somebody just recorded it. And, and I know Masa... Not Masa. Sorry. Oh, sorry for swearing. Uh, you can cut that out. That's fine. I think it was Kekwada 
from Japan. He picked up the video from somewhere, I don't know where, and yeah. he broadcasted that in Japan. So yeah. now, and then it then somehow nowadays on YouTube it went viral, viral somehow. Me in the, in the pink shirt with long hair. Yeah. When you're drowning, oh gosh, I was laughing. But <laughs> well, that was really hilarious. And yeah, in the end, it was good. It was in the church. Dirk was playing the organ in 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 the church. Uh, right. we first one one time in the afternoon before the wedding, and that's that was was funny somehow. It was, it was a great occasion. What, uh, was this a special request by Kai, or uh, did you offer yourself? How did it happen? Yeah, it was a request from Kai. And, it was uh, a request. Yeah. Uh, I, uh, with all due respect, Ralph, you you're a, f a fantastic singer, but you look so uncomfortable there. <laughs> you're looking up and down, and you're. <laughs> you know what? I always hated it to to perform in front of family and, and, and small. I mean, sometimes you have small audience, like maybe 250 people sometimes with the band still, but then you have your band and your you're just the wall of sound and everything you have. Right. <laughs> but the right. staff alone, sh sh shit, you know? <laughs> <laughs> when I was still, I was more nervous than I was playing in Bakken, for instance. <laughs> <laughs> and then no microphone, nothing, like no monitor, nothing to really help you out, so. That felt okay. Uh, it took me a while to get used to sing without microphone because you always have this posture always somehow programmed in your mind, you know, and then all, all of a sudden, but it worked because we rehearsed in the afternoon and I said, okay, let's do this. And the church had a good sound with the, with the hall and the reverb and everything, so everything was fine. <laughs> so uh, let me ask you something, Ralph. You know, uh, again, we mentioned the fantastic era uh, that Gamma Ray had with your presence in it. Uh, what would be your your most uh, uh, fond memory of this time? It doesn't necessarily need to be with the band itself. Perhaps it's your uh, your time. Perhaps it's singing at a particular stage or recording this DVD or a launch of an album. What was it? Actually, it was the recording of the Heading for the East video. It was recorded in two days. And I, I was so happy that my voice felt so fresh that we, we didn't have... We didn't even do have have to do an overdub afterwards. It really worked well, and I was really proud and happy about that. And of course, me being the first time in, in, in Japan, and that was, you know, so many impressions and so many things were going on, just like the the glittery world of Japan, you know, the, the electronic overdose everywhere in every corner and all the big buildings and the crowdy, massive crowdy overloaded streets with people, you know, it's just, it's yeah. indescribable, and it still it is when you go there. But it, when it's the first time, it's really impressive, you know. So what, there was almost no sleep because of all these impressions. And back in the days, we were just for partying like hell, you know. So it was, <laughs> it was going to a club at night and then doing shows at night, and, and you know, before that, because Japan shows were our early shows. It's a six p.m. show. And then after the show, it's only 8.30 or 9 p.m. And then you go out having, having a little bit of dinner. And then, of course, in the club or a bar. And that's what we did. Of course. And you have you got big fans in Japan. I mean, you have big, big, big fans in Japan. That What a fantastic time, once again. I mean, uh, we, I absolutely love those three albums. So as we continue to walk down the path of your career, Ralph, uh, you at some point, and you mentioned the distance uh, of that it implicated working with Gamma Ray, which was a little bit complicated. Uh, but you you mentioned that, and at some point after the three albums and after the live DVD, uh, there uh, you go into the last three finalists for Judas Priest. Um, yeah. What happened there, and I know that was naturally the, uh, 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 I guess, the inception of, of Primal Fear right after this. Can you talk to us a little bit about that time in particular, your, uh, uh, your tryouts and the time after that, Ralph? Yeah, on one hand, nothing happened. <laughs> on, the <other laughs> hand, on the other hand, many things happened. Yeah, so I did this application just for fun. You know, because mm -hmm. Edgar was calling me up. My my former drummer from Time Pace called me up. Judas Priest is looking for a singer. I said, what? Yeah, and I heard that Rob left the band. And I, w I was a long-year fan of Judas Priest, and I couldn't believe it. It was a disappointment for me as well, you know. So, uh, but I said, I'm in Gamma Ray, and I, they might not take me anyway. 
So uh, I sent in the demo. We, we recorded the demo for the next album. That's what I sent in mm. and um, did this application. And then a letter came in that uh, the guys are interested and they want to have a videotape for myself. And I, then I sent in the Heading for the East video. Wow. So I was on the, it just ended on a, some kind of short list. Didn't hear anything for years, two and a half years. I called up there once in a while, and maybe that was also a little bit bad, but I was so curious what's going on and stuff. And the situation in Gamma Ray was not so easy in the early 90s, where I still had to drive up and down to record new demos and music and stuff. You know, Nowadays, you can really swap files on the internet back and forth around the, the entire planet. But the thing is, in the 90s, we didn't have that. So um, right. the guy wanted me to move to Hamburg. And I was in my job still, and then I was surrounded by my family and girlfriend and everything. So I couldn't go to Hamburg. And then the relation somehow also was a little bit critical because I did this application for Judas Priest. I told them, and of course, it didn't really, they were not happy about it. They asked me, what would I do if I get the job? And I said, I might go. And this is not good for a band, of course, you know. Right. So in the end, we separate ways. Uh, somehow, um, I don't know, at a night of discussion, all of a sudden I was out. But I, in the end, I heard they didn't really want to fire me. They just want to talk about it. So some, somehow I got out of the band. And But hey, two weeks later, we, were, we sat together on the phone and we talked it out and everything was fine. But, you know, in the end, um, I heard that then the record company wanted to uh, try to sing anyway. Mm -hmm. and I was waiting for the big job, which never happened. Uh, but from the perspective of nowadays, everything's fine because uh, they found a wonderful, fantastic singer with Tim. And, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a huge job to, to step in the shoes of Rob. And he did that amazing, you know, really great. So everything was fine but i was just there and really disappointed about everything you know i thought i might have to quit and do my job until i die so but then i, I uh, visited sinner because the guys we, which still knew each, know each other and we got to know each other more because i was doing well, before i got the rejection from judas priest i rehearsed judas priest of course and that's what i did with some local guys and we had a show a cover show one day doing priest songs and two of the guys of the band uh, couldn't do it because they were busy with other stuff and so I asked Tom and, and, and Matt to step in to play the priest stuff and that's how we got to, to know each other more closely again. We know mm -hmm. have known each other for years in the, in the scene of Essling. In the scene. Everybody knows each other in the scene of course and uh, but Sinner always did this more kind of rock and roll stuff and I was more the metal guy, so so um, I was in the studio singing choirs, same like now, but now I do it at home. Anyway, <laughs> I was doing it in the book studio and uh, did some choirs, and then we sat together, and, and Matt asked me and Tom, hey, Ralph, what's up with your career? And I said, mm, nothing. <laughs> well, let's compose some songs, let's write something. And there was this um, record company from Japan, JVC, who was waiting for me anyway uh, to do something with me if I ever have something coming up. That's what, uh, what we recorded the four track demo, and I sent it in a tape and had a contract right away with JVC Japan. Right. That was the, the launch, the big launch of, of Primal Fear in the end. Tom, Matt, and I, and of course Klaus, uh, spelling on drums, the messing mm -hmm. Were four piece at the beginning, recording the demo, sending into Japan, and then European record companies got curious hearing about that, and then a competition started. We were in really good, really good position to start, and it was actually the uh, I don't like the word second wave uh, of metal when when Hammerfall started to be right. successful. It was that time, but you know I see myself as a guy who did metal longer. Gamma Ray and whatever, so uh, we did not somehow jump on the second wave or something. We just did what we love to do. We played music. Uh, yeah. I always considered myself that I always did this without somehow thinking about uh, putting some somebody into a shop uh, in, in any genre or whatever. For me, power metal was always heavy metal, you know. So anyway, yeah, we were lucky that it started that 
uh, so, so good for us. Uh, the first album, self-titled Primal Fear, went in a high charts position, and that was different at the time. It was not so easy to go to the charts because mm -hmm. the numbers were still higher to achieve good uh, uh, star uh, numbers in the charts. You know? So we were really lucky and happy, and of course we did a great job. So. <laughs> You guys had an incredible acceptance. I mean, right from the beginning, like you said, you charted. Uh, you guys charted in the German charts from right from the right from the get go uh, with your first album, and then after that, we could tell that you guys, you and and and, and Matt, have such a, a, a serious working ethic of of releasing album after album with a theme, with great concepts. I, I particularly love uh, your. Uh, a crow concept that you had very much in the beginning, uh, Raven Crow. Uh, yeah. That was a big, big fan of that. Uh, I know that uh, you know you mentioned the second wave or the new wave rather of power metal. I know that you went real uh, on tour with bands such as Metallium and you helped them, you know, get out there as well. And since from from the beginning you were uh, already putting. Uh, I guess with your, uh, you were so known in the metal world that you had already kind of like a stamp, like people already knew your style and knew that they were going to listen to quality music in the form of Primal Fear. That's fantastic, Ralph. Thank you. By the way, it's, an eagle. it's no raven, it's, it's no crow, it's an eagle. <laughs> oh, it's an eagle, really? It's a black eagle. That's what it yeah. is, right? It's like a, like a robotic metal eagle. Exactly. Correct? Metallic. Thank you. For It's a metallic <laughs> eagle. Thank you for the correction. Yeah. <laughs> so we wanted, we wanted to definitely talk to you about uh, another, uh, uh, you know, long uh, a while back we had Henning Henning ba uh, Bass uh, bass Bass yeah. from uh, from Germany, another singer that uh, of course you know you recorded uh, one song. I think it, I think it was one or two songs in a, in an album. Um, called uh, Catch the Rainbow, a tribute to Rainbow. I think Uli Kush and Roland Grappo and among uh, and other musicians put this together. I think Henjo Richter uh, from uh, uh, from Gamma Ray, later from Gamma Ray, the guitarist, put it together. You sang Still I'm Sad uh, uh, from, uh, I don't know if you recall this, but it's a fantastic rendition that uh, I'll probably, uh, I'll send it to you uh, uh, so that you can remember, but it's a fantastic rendition. Do you, do you have any memories of this album, Ralph, by any chance? You know, you know I've recorded so many uh, cover yeah. tracks, also with Fun Fear, and there was, once there was a time where it was very popular to re-record stuff from, um, from bands who gave us inspiration to, what, to do what we do. And of course we were doing that because we love the music. But yeah, I think yeah, Uli put that together back in the days. It was in between the years also when I think I still wasn't in Gamma Ray. And uh, maybe I sung Still I'm Sad, I can't remember. I just know what that we did with Primal Fear. We did uh, uh, also Rainbow and we did um, Accept, Iron Maiden, Judas Priest. We did Deep Purple on our own album. The first album we, we did uh, Speed King. And so many covers. That's why sometimes it's not easy to recall all of them. <laughs> <laughs> and you've been so prolific in the metal world. Even uh, one of my favorite songs growing up, I can tell you this, man. I have such vivid memories of the music that you've made or participated in. Uh, uh, the Wild Hunt. Uh, the Wild Hunt by Therion. Oh, oh yeah. man. Uh, you know, it, it, was, uh, it, was, um, it was out of the norm to hear a clean singer Uh, and Therion, you know, because obviously you had either a growling vocal, so you had operatic stuff, and then out of nowhere comes Ralph uh, with the Wild Hunt, and man, I I just stuck onto that song, really liked it. Any memories of that? Of course, but my yeah. perspective on that time is always I could have had a better sound. <laughs> you look, at, <laughs> you know, now since I'm producing my own vocals with my own microphone, my own compressor, my own whatever, <clears throat> my own system, I know what I want to sound like. And back in the days, I had no clue. I just sang. And sometimes you sometimes you have to adjust your voice a little bit to technique too, because it, when it sounds great in the rehearsal room, it always sounded great live, but it's in the studio. I always had bad feeling, oh, that's my voice. I'm so thin, whatever. I'm screaming so loud, and it's so small and so tiny in the speakers. Then I learned what how to handle with the technique to make it still sound big in the end, because this filter, this compressor or whatever, and that's what I'm missing from that time, that my voice is not being recorded properly without blaming the people. It was maybe also me giving the input, the wrong input to the microphone. But uh, you learn a lot over the years, you know. 
Of course, you go and uh, you 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 master your style of uh, recording, I guess, of how you like to sound. Like you said, Ralph. Regardless, still one of my favorite vocal lines of all time is, you know, "Heaven can wait." Oh my God. Anyway, what a fantastic song. Uh, oh. Let's let's continue. Uh, let's continue talking, Ralph, uh, and jump a little bit to more of a, uh, you know, ever since you we saw you on stage, uh, we've noticed that you know you're a you're a fit guy, you're a bit guy. You know, we recently spoke to Tommy Karevic Car uh, from Camelot. We spoke a little bit of how he stay, likes to stay in shape. Um, I try to work out a little bit, as you can tell, not a, not as strong as you, right? Uh, but <laughs> but uh, what do you do? Uh, you know, one while you're on tour and off of tour what do you do to keep in shape uh what you know you're eating right you're uh, working out what is it that you do ralph to uh you know and stay in such good shape we've well, always seen you in good shape thank you very much first of all first of all i might be happy to to have a good metabolic system which is just really uh i i had years where i just could eat whatever i want without gaining fat it's changed a little bit, so I have to take care now, of course. And if you build a little bit of a cost, muscle costume or whatever, I don't really need stretch for it, but the more muscles you have, the more your body burns, right? So, uh, and now it's also not so easy anymore to gain more. Now my goal is to keep what I have and not to gain fat, you know? So that's what I'm still trying to do, which is not easy now as well as the times of the lockdown, no fitness, no gym and nothing. You do it at home, and that's what I still do. So, and I don't do anything on tour because I need all my power on stage because I'm really a loud screamer, and so I need my all my power for my throat every night. And it's also a show; it's not only singing. You know, you have to be front man. You got to sometimes that happens more easier, sometimes not. If you just you don't have good days every day not only in terms of singing, also in terms of having the mood of doing it, you know, if you're out there for, for three months in a row or whatever, it's not easy to do it every, every single night. It's not, it's no complaining, no bitching. I miss it a lot now, but sometimes right. I really want to say as a human being, it's really a lot of stress. If you don't have sleep, if you're lying in that tour bus, don't catch sleep in the, the first week anyway, it's always run. Some people say I can't sleep without this, and I say I I, I can't sleep with this. <laughs> you know, so that's what's happening to me in the first week, and so you have a lot of lack the lack sleep, and in the end, uh, that's not productive for the voice. As we all know, the voice needs a lot of sleep and, and hydration and stuff. Anyway, I'm not complaining. I'm doing this because I love it, but sometimes it's also not easy. I just want to say. Of course. I mean, you have to take care of yourself. It's uh, uh, your, the, 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 the voice or the throat. It's also a muscle and you have to, you know, take care of it and, and protect it. And obviously everything that goes into your body is going to affect it some way, somehow. And if you're looking to give the best performance out to your audience, then definitely you have to take care of yourself. Uh, Ralph, so in the current state of what, what you're doing, you know, uh, you're saying you're doing workouts at home. Uh, you're teaching uh, uh, singing lessons, whether it's online, offline, in your home, et cetera, in your studio, uh, perhaps. Uh, what, are, what, are, what are you doing to keep sane during these very, very difficult times? Any other hobbies that you might have? Um, first of all, now it's not allowed to bring in people into my studio, but basically, yes, there's people coming to my studio. Now it's only happening online, worldwide. And... The key is being positive. I mean, it's not, you know, on Instagram and all social medias, everything is just only positive and yeah, how great and everything. It's not always that, of course, but right. you don't right. want to bring people down posting something with a bad mood. Sometimes that happens and you just want to erase it, you know. Well, you know, in the end, it's, it's, we're all in the same boat, which is a phrase and it costs money to pay. <laughs> Uh, but anyway, it, we're on the same boat and we have to make the best out of the situation and, and stay positive because we will be back. Don't worry. I know it's not easy. This is 365 is a year, more than a year of, of, of lockdown for music. And But still, music is happening in the studio. So that's once again, that's what really keeps us going. I can speak for myself. That's what keep, keeps me going, being busy and teaching and everything, you know. So basically it's being positive and um, in terms of mindset 
and uh, we're all going to come over this, of course. Yeah. We will overcome this. You're absolutely right. Uh, Ralph, we can tell that you're a person that's obviously well put together also in the mental uh, side of things and the psychology side of things. Uh, recently, we spoke to, uh, you know, speaking of the current time and, and the climate of how everyone is feeling. We spoke to Snowy Shaw, who, you know, recently uh, also released his book and where he talks about, you know, b uh, being very aware of your mental state throughout this pandemic, ba making sure that you speak about your feelings, making sure that that you're, you know, that 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 you're vocal about what you're feeling. Ralph, uh, anything that you could tell, and I think your previous message was very uh, spot on, but anything that you could tell our Metal Talk listeners, uh, you know, fellow musicians, everybody out there, uh, you know, those uh, words that you can share with them, hang on, be strong, we'll be back. Anything that you can tell our listeners? I just, just, I just repeat what you said, because yeah. We will be back. I mean, I don't know. They all say, politicians say it's going to be a different world afterwards. It's never going to be like it was and stuff, you know. But, you know, if we have a vaccine going on and it's what we have right now. And I know there's so many theories about this conspiracy shit more up and down. But, you know, hey, hey, I mean, you send your kids to have the first vaccines when they're kids right, and whatever and nothing happens. And I trust this, of course, right? I know there's many of the different opinions. My opinion is I trust it, and it's good to go out there again if we're all safe, and so forth, right? That, uh, that's my opinion. Of course. By the way, I forgot to answer the question. My other hobby is being astro uh, astronomics. I like to watch the stars, and not only the stars, I'm really curious what's, what's going on and everything. So I was thinking about studying uh, astronomic now in, 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 as a one-year online studium study. Oh, but wow. I have to overthink because it's also expensive to do that. <laughs> yeah. So uh, what do you think about the recent pictures and videos that we got of Mars? Are you excited about that? Yes, of course. I mean, yeah. I mean, we are so far in our heads, in our minds already, uh, exploring with telescopes and everything. And, and the great mathematics uh, out there, starting from Einstein and so forth, and so many good scientists who are well-informed and I was watching the series. Oh, you're still there? I was watching the series, uh, the universe, and I know this is from 2007, but hey, this is 30, 14 years ago, and they were so far already, you know. And, and now, uh, so what's the name? Of, uh, I, can't, I didn't forget the name of the of the trolley on, on Mars. Now. I, I can't. I can re I can't remember, but whatever I, it's called, yeah. I think I had it, but now it's gone. Anyway, I'm really happy about the pictures and about finding ice maybe underneath and, and water and maybe another life form or whatever. I just would love to, to, to hear the good news. And, you know, and these dimensions out there is so unbelievable. It's, it's somehow not easy to, to, to get in your mind how far all that is. A light year is nothing in the universe, but it, this is what the light takes is somehow traveling in one year it is only one light year and we're millions of light years away from somewhere you know so this is just unimaginable so very soon expect uh, you know Ralph become an astronomer and uh, I hope uh, I hope that you get to uh, wear a robe and you grow out your beard and you know you start coming out in the discovery channel Ralph would love to see you out there like that man I uh, will cut this again when it's summertime because it's only a winter beard. <laughs> but well, yes, Fair yeah. enough. Uh, yeah, I'm very curious about astronomics, astronomy. Yeah. That's fantastic, Ralph. Uh, you know, uh, we thank you so much for having uh, this incredible metal talk with us, for sharing so much of your career. We are so excited to see you, uh, you know, once again on the stage where, uh, please tell us, where can we follow you? Where can we, you know, stay tuned to everything that Ralph Shapers is doing right now? Where can we follow you? Yeah, basically there's many things happening now on Instagram, like Ralph Shapers, only Ralph Shapers. And you can tell it's a black box, Ralph Shapers name, an official account. Uh, I didn't get verified. I don't know why, you know, I'm sending... I've sent out my passport. All, and maybe the old, the entire Eastern world has my passport already, but but not Instagram. <laughs> I don't know. They don't get it by me. I don't don't. I don't know why. Maybe it's just for tits, boobs, whatever. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
I don't, I don't know it. I don't care. I'm Ralph, and I'm on Instagram. I'm also on Facebook, and uh, I have I have a uh, web page. But of course, you can contact me also there. There's uh, www.ralphshapers.com. Okay. And you can whenever you are curious about uh, learning about vocals, uh, somehow re- borrow my voice for a song, whatever. Just contact me. I'm there. We will definitely leave all the links to Ralph's pages here, right below in the description of our video. Ralph, once again, thank you for joining Metal Talk. Thank you for sharing all this incredible experiences in your career. And we can't wait to see you on tour once again, my friend. Thanks for having me and thanks for supporting Heavy Metal. I will also share bits and pieces from this Metal Talk if you're allowing it. You know, I I would love to do that, uh, spreading the word a little bit. And thanks. Thanks for your support. Thank you so much, Ralph. Awesome.